everyone, welcome back to the Herbert Zoo. I am Nanette, the Mama Zoo Keeper. Um, we are a family of 11 and today our video is going to be a little bit different. Today I'm doing um, making pine tar soap. So it's a little bit more on the lines of like homesteading than it is just whatever, other stuff. So. Anyways, pine tar soap, let me tell you a little bit about it. First of all, I've been making soap for a long time, um, almost 10 years. I usually make a lye-based soap. Um, we started using, I started using lye soap just basically to treat um, acne on my face. I found it at a store when we moved to our current area. I wasn't able to find it anywhere so I decided to, to try my hand at making it and that had gone really well um, for us. So now I am going to try doing a pine tar soap. Pine tar, I first heard about pine tar when I was pregnant with the twins who are now five and on occasion women who are pregnant with twins get a rash. Um, it's It's basically um, a itchy, red, blistery kind of type of a rash, pregnancy rash. And um, thankfully I did not really have to deal with anything like that, but it's something that I'd read about and was prepared to kind of deal with if I had to. And pine tar, pine tar soap was um, recommended for treating that kind of a rash. Pine tar is really good at, at basically easing the itch, um, but it's also really good as far as treating anything that is, it's an antifungal and an antibacterial. So anyone who has any skin conditions, um, pine tar is a good thing. A pine tar soap is a good thing to use. We do have multiple skin issues in our home and uh, sensitivities and one of the major things that everybody deals with or a lot of people deal with is both eczema and dandruff so we're hoping that maybe the pine tar will help in treating those things without having to purchase a bunch of chemicals and that sort of thing and honestly we haven't found anything over the counter that works really well for everyone in the house so we have that the recipe that I'm using today is kind of one that I adapted. It's a trial run. Um, I found several online, I found several on YouTube, but none of them had, that I found, none of them had the ingredients that I wanted to use. One of the things that I wanted to use was our venison tallow. The venison tallow basically is just rendered fat from deer. So we hunt and we try to use as much of those those deer as we we can and when you render down the fat basically it's the same thing as lard it's a, it's fat and it can be used in whatever um, some people say that they don't like the gamey flavor of it in cooking um, we really haven't used it for cooking we've used it for candle making and um, tallow bombs I use it on the tallow bomb on my face every day and then we have like a diaper rash cream that we use all the time that's a tallow bomb. But tallow is great because number one, it's organic. You are harvesting it from a deer that you've already killed um, and so you're utilizing as much of that animal but the animal has grazed and eaten clean food um, for the entirety of its life. So you have immediate organic fat um, not treated with steroids or hormones or anything like that. The other thing is because the um, nature of a deer, so tallow is any fat that's rendered off of any red meat. Um, so because of the nature of the deer, some of the stuff in the tallow that makes up the tallow um, makes it very compatible to our systems. So if you are consuming something but your body can't absorb it or use it, or if you're putting it on your skin and your body can't absorb it or use it, it's going to flush out of your system, hopefully. But in the case of tallow, it is very similar to our system, so we are able to utilize those nutrients in it. So tallow is really high in vitamins A, D, K, and then antioxidants, including vitamin E. So one of the things that vitamin E does is it helps to treat your skin 
and help prevent wrinkles and again these things help because our cells can use it because our bodies can use it it helps to maintain moisture naturally so a lot of people will tend to use tallow because it is a natural way to protect your skin from aging um, in in that it's very close to our natural skin oils that we already produce so it's not clogging to our pores or anything like that so those are that was a really big thing for me that I wanted to be able to use is the tallow number one because we've already rendered it we've already harvested it and it's free to us so why not use it the oils and fats that I'm using in my soap today are coconut oil that tallow shea butter castor oil olive oil and then the pine tar is included in the oils and fats so we're gonna give it a go I'm a little bit hesitant and scared because I've never worked with pine tar and um, smells can sometimes be a little bit more overwhelming to me than they are to other people so um, we'll, we'll see what we got I already have all of my fats melted down I'm gonna move my camera just so you can see a little bit better In this crock pot um, they are ready to go it's not cool by any means there's actually something in this like a little natty fly I don't see it but I don't know if it's out okay anyways I am going to mix my lye water um caution while using lye do not have my glasses on i'm going to stay kind of back and away from the lye water as i mix it i am wearing gloves i usually don't but i am wearing gloves because last time i used lye water i did have some run up my arm and i had a burn going up my arm so I am wearing gloves, long sleeves, and we'll see the chemical reaction that we have here for our lye water. You always want to add the lye to the water, not the other way around, because you don't want it to combust. It doesn't really combust, but it can explode because it, it basically it reaches a boiling point. I use this big pickle jar. A lot of people will use a smaller container. I use the big pickle jar though because I can do this and mix it without being really anywhere near to the water. I don't have to worry about sloshing it on my skin. I don't have to worry about a spoon or something else that I put in there that I then have to neutralize the lye once it is out. Lye is a base, so you would neutralize it with an acid. I typically have vinegar water sitting by to neutralize it if I need to. So as the lye crystals dissolve in the water, it causes a chemical reaction. There's steam and it's heating. I don't know if I can get it to where you can see a little bit of the condensation and the steam building up in the jar. And my lye water is white, cloudy. It will get clear once it's clear then it's actually starting to clear up now basically then all the lye crystals are dissolved into water and it's ready to use I'm not gonna worry so much about the temperatures of my oil and my lye water so much today because I'm, I'm cooking the soap I'm using a hot process soap so it needs to be hot anyways I'm gonna add my pine tar and show you this so it is tarry 
it is funky. Um, it was in a very cold room, so when I actually dished it out, and it still is kind of solid, it's funky. I don't know any other way to kind of describe it. smell the pine tar earlier he's one that's going to be using this he we've been using actually with him a pine tar soap that we bought at a natural a local uh like natural food and supplement store here and um it's not it's green it's like this color green and Pine tar, tar is not green. So to me, it seems that we're paying for a soap that really isn't, um, doesn't have a high amount of what we're looking for in it. The benefits that we're looking for for the pine tar, we're not going to get it if there's not any pine tar or a very minute amount of pine tar in the actual product. So, um, yeah. There's that. That's another reason why I wanted to make this soap just like the lye soap. In and of itself, it's not something that's easy to find in this area. So for me, why not just make it? I'm going to get my mixer real quick. Um, it smells. <laughs> bad but it does not smell good either I do have some essential oils to add to it so that it maybe can help balance out any stinky smell if if we are at that stinky smell if we're at that stinky smell place so when I was getting the oils and the fats ready to melt them down, my hands got a lot of good moisture because um, the olive oil, the shea butter, and the coconut oil, extra stuff all got smeared on my hands. Okay, so I just wanted to show you what we have going on. This is uh, the melted fats all together in the crock pot. I usually don't use this crock pot, but I am today because I didn't know really how big of a batch it would end up making. And then here is my lye water. As you can see, it's it's you know past that cloudy point. Um, and all dissolved down in there. That's really not good for focus. But there it is. It's obviously hot because there is condensation on the inside of the jar. All right, so I'm going to add my fly water and then we are going to, it's warm, so it's going to start cooking pretty fast. And cooking is basically the process that happens um, where it, it starts turning to soap. So the lye bonds with the fat and creates a process called saponification. And saponification is where you get your soap. And it's everything's already hot, so. So what I'm 
going to do now, basically I'm just mixing all of the lye water into the fat so that they're bind bonding or binding to the fats. Um, we're going to do that until this mixture here comes to what is called trace and it's, I'm not even mixing it other than with my hand, but basically you want it to be at a thick pudding consistency. It's already at a thin pudding consistency and I really haven't done anything. So depending on your fats, depending on your oils, depending on your soap, depending on everything involved will determine how quickly your um, soap comes to trace. So. peanut butter on the camera. Bad juju. So this is definitely um, a quick process to get it to trace. If you think about working with meringue and you want like stiff or firm peaks in your meringue, this oh, is kind of, you know, in that same ballpark. I'm going to do just a little bit more because I found some spots around the edges that seem a little bit... Okay, I'm going to let it be because it already came to trace. You might need to be replacing this. <laughs> My stick Linda hates me. Um, it definitely looks kind of like chocolate pudding. Peanut butter. It's... What are you doing? Oh, it doesn't look like peanut butter. That looks like chocolate pudding, Mason. In goober tin. So, it's definitely cooking. Cooking, cooking, cooking. Um, how do you know when the soap is done? It starts to get kind of shiny um and then it goes to kind of clearish and that signifies that your your soap is done um i am gonna let this be and let it cook for a little bit i don't think again that it's gonna take very long to cook down um it doesn't really cook down it actually expands and gets crazy but um i don't think it's going to take this very long so there we go all right so this is what the soap looks like right now um it has been cooking for maybe 14 or 15 minutes and i don't know if you can tell real well casting a shadow on it but it's definitely changing in consistency and this is what you're looking for right here to like see if the soap is done is this almost translucent like 
thickness of the soap. It definitely is easier to tell when your soap doesn't have any color. Um, but you can do a zap test as well. And basically a zap test is looking for a zap like you would get from a 9 volt battery um, from the soap. And if it if it zaps, then you it's lie heavy. It's not done yet. So the first way that you can do that is you can moisten your finger, rub it on the soap. I don't want soap like on my finger really. And touch it to your tongue. If you get a zap, then it's lie heavy. And I get no zap. There's nothing except kind of this pine tar taste. Um, the smell is um, smelly. It's not bad. It's it's different, um, but it's not bad. If you've ever used uh, like tea gel shampoo that has a tar in it, that is what makes it work. And um, it's not as bad as that. It's not as funky smelling as that. I'm going to add some essential oils just because maybe we can tone down the smell and have it smell a little bit better. I'm not measuring, I'm just dripping. This is bergamot. Cause I like the citrusy kind of fresh smell of it almost. Um, and then lavender, if I can get the lavender open one-handed. I don't want like an excessive amount of this, like these smells because it's something that everybody in the house is going to be using. So like the boys don't want to walk around smelling like lavender. Go ask daddy, buddy. Do I have to take one? No, you can take them both. Two utensils? Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to spoon my soap into my mold. Um, one of the things that I love about doing soap is you get this leftover stuff on the inside of your crock pot. And I always just fill the crock pot with water. And then you kind of almost have like a different type of a gel um, soap that can kind of be made from that. So, yeah, using as much of it as possible. And again, hot process soap, because it is already cooked, it's already gone through the chemical change to change the lye into soap. Um, when you're putting it into a mold like this, your top is going to be not flat. The bar isn't 100% consistent. That smells good, Mama. I added lavender and bergamot. So yeah, I actually am very happy with the smell right now. And it was a very quick cooking soap. Logan wasn't home, but that kind of sounds like... Yeah, Logan's definitely home. I'm sorry. <laughs> Blocking my camera. Okay.
least overnight. It's like not even 3.30 in the afternoon now. And this is actually really kind of nice. <laughs> I can't always do this and uh, flatten the soap and it is it's working really nice. It's a nice color. I'm actually super, super excited except when I stick my elbow on the hot freaking crock pot. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll let it cool overnight and then tomorrow I will just pop the mold off of the soap. Um, it's in a, my soap mold is a wooden block and then it has a silicone insert. So once it's solidified some, we'll just go ahead and um, pop it out of the mold and then I'll decide whether or not I want to cut it then cutting sometimes just helps it to firm up a little bit more quickly um but there you have it pine tar soap i'm hoping it works <laughs> So I just wanted to show you guys the soap on my hands, the little bit that I had on my hands, and I just got a little bit of water on it and how nicely it's lathering on. I'm actually really liking the feel of this soap, like a lot. So I just wanted to show you guys that. All right, it is almost 9 p.m. Jacob just cut this soap for me. Um, you can see it has a really chocolatey brown um, color to it. It's pretty soft still. The, it's definitely all the way cool but it's pretty soft so the soap just needs to kind of sit and dry and usually um, you could leave it in the mold and let it sit and dry and harden and so on but then it's harder to just cut so Jacob wanted to definitely cut it tonight and I had no problem with him doing that so he did cut it tonight we didn't do anything to clean up the tops or anything um, we're just going to use this at home it's not if I gift it to anyone it's going to be close friends that yeah, they can deal with it. Um, but hopefully it'll be pretty solid tomorrow. Jacob was disappointed because he wanted to be able to use some tonight. Um, again, I did put lavender and um, lavender essential oil and bergamot essential oil in this batch. Um, Jacob wanted it to smell like dirt. He was disappointed it didn't smell more earthy. Um, so next go around we might do something different with the scent, but maybe not. Um, this is what we have going on. So I just dumped water in the crock pot where the soap had dried along the sides of the crock pot and has started to clean it out. Um, Again, I do this because, you know, you're going to wash out the crock pot and you are dumping this leftover soap down the drain. And I will wait and see what it's like tomorrow morning. It's still warm. The crock pot has not been off very long. Um, if it's kind of gel-like and coagulated kind of in the morning, then I'll call it good. We'll put it into a jar and use it. Uh, maybe as hand soap. I might use it in my hair. We'll we'll see. Um, if it is a little bit wet still, if it's too runny, then I'll just turn the crock pot on and let it simmer. And uh, just there's a like bubble in the middle of the spoon. I thought maybe I could blow bubbles. I couldn't. So anyways, that's where we're at. If this is still too liquidy in the morning, we will turn the crock pot on and let it just kind of cook down. And um, there are our bars of soap. I'm really excited about how they turned out. 
If you like this video, definitely give us a thumbs up, um, subscribe to our channel, and turn on those notifications so you get an update whenever we post a new video. Thanks. Bye.